Hello everybody, Manvira here with Coins, Cards, and Collectibles, and today I'm going to show you how any beginner numismatist can put together a large collection with a variety for just $20. Now what I have right in front of you is a snapshot of what we'll be talking about today. And all these coins and bills you see here in front of you can be yours for just $20, even some 24 karat gold bullion. Yes, we'll talk about that a bit later, but let's start with a great jumping off point into numismatics, and that is the Lincoln Wheat Cent. Now these are a great place to start because they are cheap, they are easy to get, and often they're quite common to get in change, and uh, they're quite interesting. Right on the obverse it depicts Abraham Lincoln's bust, and on the reverse it depicts two wheat ears encapsulating the words one cent. Now in other countries I'd imagine if you're starting a collection you would also start with a lower denomination coin or bill. And this is a great place to start. Look at that design. The design of these wheat ears on the back just beckons back to a simpler time. And this is a great chunk of copper for anybody's collection and I believe it's an integral part of anybody's collection, especially here in the US. These are something that are pretty much essential. Now, these aren't the only pennies we're gonna talk about. So let's talk about this penny that has some mystery shrouded around it for those who don't know. In 1943, we minted pennies in steel. Yes, steel, stainless steel, however you would like to say. This penny was minted in steel because copper, being a war metal, is something that we had to save for World War II as the United States entered into World War II. During the year of 1942-1943, we tried to take as many of the war metals from the U.S. currency and put them into the war efforts. Now this, if I can grab a magnet, will show you just how strong this is attached to a magnet. Now just watch. Boom, watch that, you see how quickly that just stuck to the magnet? Yes, now this is, I'm having a bit of trouble here because it is so magnetic. This is something that I believe everybody should have in their collection. Look at that. I mean, I could do this all day and just attach to a magnet. But this is great type coin that anybody should have, especially if they're starting to numismatics. And you can get this for pennies on the dollar. Great piece. But of course, wheat cents aren't the only cents we're talking about today, if that makes any sense. <laughs> well, let's uh, move on to the ever classic Indian head penny. Now, the Indian head penny, or Indian head cent, as a lot of people like to refer to it as, is a gorgeous design that depicts a Native American princess on the obverse, and on the reverse, depicts an oak wreath encapsulating the word that says one cent, and right above it is a shield gorgeous scent that any for anybody's collection and I think this is also an essential for anybody who's just starting to numismatics just as a great uh, jumping off point. Now that's not the only uh, scents we're going to talk about. Let's talk about some five cents. Now right in front of you I will show you this Liberty V nickel, a gorgeous design and is actually my favorite coin design that the United States has ever produced. Look at that. The obverse features Lady Liberty wearing a crown that says Liberty right on it. And on the reverse, it has this V depicting the Roman numeral for five. And it is encapsulated by a wreath, a gorgeous, simple design. Now, interestingly enough, the sense right here wasn't always on the coin. In 1884, they had to add it because in 1883, when this coin debuted its design, it was actually produced without scent, so some enterprising criminals who decided to gold plate this tried to pass it off as five dollar gold pieces. Now, the United States Mint had to respond to that by adding cents right on the bottom of the coin in 1884, so this coin has some great history behind it. But let's not just get bogged down with, you know, V-nickels, let's go to the nickel everybody knows here. This is the buffalo nickel. It's named that because you can see the buffalo right on the reverse. Now it's also called an Indian head penny, or Indian head cent, sorry. It's uh, 
It's a nice piece of history, and a lot of people who don't know about coin collecting have seen this coin before. It is a great coin with a gorgeous design. As you can see right here on the obverse, it features a Native American chief, and on the reverse, it depicts a buffalo. So it is a great piece of coinage that anybody should have in their collection. A great type coin, and this one is a 1913 Type 1 Buffalo Nickel. Now, for those of you who know your coins, you know that this is, in fact, one of the desirable coins to have in anybody's collection. So, this makes its way into anybody's collection, just not the 1913, just because it's hard to come by. Now, let's move on from 5 to 10, and from 10 we go to silver. Right in front of you, you are looking at a silver mercury dime. Now, this doesn't contain any mercury, contrary to its name. It is made of 90% silver and 10% copper. It is a gorgeous design and is great for silver stackers and numismatic, numismatic people alike because it's fractional. It's a small amount of silver and it has a gorgeous design with a winged cap liberty on the obverse and a pillar with olive branches on the reverse. Great coin for anybody's collection and I think it's essential for anybody who's starting their journey into numismatics, they should highly consider getting this in their collection. Now this isn't the only silver we're going to talk about. Let's keep on the topic of dimes and let's go to the silver Roosevelt dime. Yeah, it is also 90% silver and this, if it was minted before 1965, was also a great little piece of fractional silver and I think that not only some young numismatists and some silver stackers should stack this, but even some of you older numismatists who are sleeping on this should get this as well. Now moving on from that, let's talk about some quarters. Right in front of you, I have a 2019 W-minted San Antonio Missions quarter. Now this is a great quarter to have because you can pay as little as 25 cents for this quarter. Yes, this coin that you see selling on eBay for $25 to $50, you can get for $0.25 cents by just coin roll hunting, which is the act of going through rolls of uh, coins that are provided by a bank and picking out things that are valuable. It's a great way to get into numismatics, and it's a great way to get valuable coins for cheap. This is a great coin to have, and I think anybody who can get it should get it into their collection. But that's not the only quarter we're going to talk about. Let's talk about the 1975 and 1976 Bicentennial Design Quarter. Now this may not be very valuable, and this is in a higher grade. It's about an AU grade, almost uncirculated. Now this is special, and I think this should be in anybody's beginner collection because on the reverse depicts a drummer boy. Now those of you who know the story about the Revolutionary War drummer boy know that this is significant and why it is significant enough to be on US coins. This is just the quarter. The half dollar has a different design and the dollar at this time also has a different design. The Bicentennial was a very interesting year. I think anybody who is starting their journey into numismatics should consider getting this Bicentennial quarter. Now let's stop talking about uh, quarters. Let's get into dollars. Now this is a Eisenhower or Ike dollar as it's known. And this one's made of clad, but you can also find them but 40% silver. You can tell it's clad because you can see the copper core. I may not be able to get the best uh, angle on this, but this depicts Eisenhower on the obverse and on the reverse. Very nice and symbolic. This shows an eagle on the moon, which is indicative of the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. This is a gorgeous, hefty coin that I think anybody can get and put into their collection. Very nice piece of currency. Uh, and on the top of a currency, let's move on. And let's talk about a silver dollar. But not just any silver dollar. I'm talking about the $1 silver certificate. Yeah, it's still silver, but it's also a dollar. So it's a silver dollar. Now what makes this special, as you can see, is this blue seal here. Now it says silver to certificate right on the top and this blue seal is quite different from 
the modern day green seals, if you will. See, I have a modern day green seal right here, and you see how it's this one's green and this one's blue. Same thing with the serial number, it's also blue. Now on the bottom it says, we'll pay to the bearer on demand. And on the back it has the same exact design as the ones they have you know, here in present day. Gorgeous piece of currency, and you can get this for pennies on the dollar. I literally mean it. This is really easy. You can even get this for $1.25. But I'm conservative on the price. Now let's move on to this. This is a star note. Star notes are very interesting in that this little star right here is indicative of that the serial number that's on this bill was misprinted or messed up somehow at the mint and uh, at the Bureau of Engraving they had to put this star here because when they mess up notes uh, in their mistake they have to account for some bookkeeping stuff. This is the exact bill you'll find these days but you can buy a $100 strap of currency and look through them and you have about a 1% chance of getting this very bill. They're a bit over our face value and it's great to have that you only paid one dollar for it. Now let's talk about everybody's favorite piece of currency, the two dollar bill. Two dollar bill, this one's a red seal and you can get these for pretty cheap because this is a 1953 red seal two dollar bill. Now right here you can see how it is a gorgeous design. Red seal, red serial number, and if you look right at the top, it says United States Notes. And on the back, a gorgeous design features Monticello, which is Thomas Jefferson's estate in Virginia. Now this is a gorgeous green color. And on the on the obverse, it has this white and red color scheme, which I absolutely find interesting. Now, interestingly enough, it says United States Notes right at the top, which is quite different from how our, our notes are these days, where it says Federal Reserve Notes. Now, what happened was when the Federal Reserve Act was passed, they had to come in and try to destroy all the Red Seal notes that they could because they were now demonetized. I think it's a really interesting part of history and that everybody should try to get this into their collection. It is an awesome piece of currency. Now, now, we're not just going to be partial to the United States. Let's move on to some really interesting pieces. What I have right in front of you now is some foreign banknotes. Now, look at just the gorgeous colors that you see here. You know, all these, and you can get them for really cheap. And as you can tell, I'm a bit partial to the Indian currency, the rupee. And there's some quirks and features we'll talk about there in just a sec. And the sizes and the different kinds of artwork. But what you see right in front of you is a wide selection of beautiful colors. And that's just not something you find on U.S. currencies. And the intricate artwork on this five reals note from the Central Bank of Qatar features a camel. And it has some nice archways, some real nice anti-counterfeiting um, technology on there. And there's even some polymer notes, plastic notes. You can see this has a window, you can see my finger on the other side, and even some braille. Now that is very consciously in mind for those of us who are visually impaired. There's some braille on a lot of the Commonwealth notes. Now let's talk about arguably my favorite currency, the rupee. Well, I'm a bit partial to it because I'm Indian. Now this is a bit illegal to own in the, in the country of India because they demonetize this. Anybody who's caught having this will be imprisoned. But I live in the U.S., so it's not going to affect me. This has some gorgeous artwork. It, it's nice. It depicts Gandhi on the obverse and uh, different kinds of letters and colors you see on there as a great anti-counterfeiting measure that they've put in place, the Reserve, the, the Reserve Bank of India. It's very nice. And this 200 rupees note is just a new one that they came out with last year. A gorgeous orange color depicting the Sanchi Stupa, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now, if we look on the reverse of the 1,000 rupee note, you'll see that we have different pieces of artwork and important pieces of history that are important to any uh, Indian in anybody's life. Now, if you can see on the 1,000 and a 1 rupee note that there is the same exact oil rig and down both of the notes 
but on the 1,000 rupee note, it depicts their space, their space uh, missions, their satellites, just a lot more artwork. Gorgeous. Now let's talk about this five reals note from the Central Bank of Qatar. This is gorgeous and is riddled with amazing symbolism and even some different anti-counterfeiting measures. You'll see that there's a lot of different patterns and stuff that you'll see uh, how the different inks are laid and how it's very hard to counterfeit this and it's a gorgeous note. You can see just the amount of detail in these arches and the different colors and different ink and different patterns just makes this an absolutely gorgeous designed bill. Moving on, we are going to China. Well, not literally. What I have right in front of you is a 5 Jiao Wu Jiao note. This also has a lot of anti-counterfeiting measures. Look at the intricacies of the different kinds of, of patterns and stuff you see on the obverse and the reverse. It's quite interesting. And you can see right here on the bottom, there's different languages for how everything's set up. There's Chinese and different kinds of characters just to accommodate different uh, languages and everything that may reside in China. And just look at the sheer amount of detail and anti-counterfeiting measures they put in place in this bill quite a gorgeous note. Let's move on to the Philippines. And look at this gorgeous purple note. You just don't see this color in the United States and the material you can see in this holographic image of, uh, I'm not quite sure who this is, I'm assuming it may be a, a top rating official of the country, but you can just see the different kinds of artwork and patterns and this little strip running down the middle is actually interlaid and anti-counterfeiting measure and just the sheer amount of patterns. You see all these different lines and this gorgeous whale at the bottom and this mountainous volcano. It's a very gorgeously designed bill. Honestly, I think that the United States needs to step up their game when it comes to color. But of course, the world does revolve around the United States dollars. Just going ahead and changing it around. It's going to mess everything up. And finally, let's talk about Australia, or any Commonwealth country. Now this is a polymer note, plastic. You can see my hand on the other side. It's a really, really interesting note with some of the most advanced anti-counterfeiting measures there are. You can see this five right here on the bottom of the window. Is It's just very kind of holographic and reflective with different kinds of color. And on the back, it depicts a lot of interesting architecture and gardens and different kinds of scientific instrument and even a kookaburra board right in the in the central window and even right at the top. Now let's move on from that and let's talk about some foreign coins. Now these aren't from the same countries but I have about five different foreign coins here and let's talk about them. So, first up, let's talk about the 1943 Australian large penny. Now, this is, you know, pretty popular and, and it's it's quite a nice design. And on the obverse, it features uh, King George VI. A nice little coin. Well, not quite little. Nice, pretty big coin to have in anybody's collection. Moving on from there, let's talk about this. I'm assuming it's going to be Chinese, but I'm not quite well versed in this. So if anybody down in the comments wants to let me know what this coin is and where it's from, I would love to know about this holy coin. Now let's go to Canada. Now this is a one cent coin from Canada. It's from an era when King George V was on the obverse. Now this cent is from 1925. And has a very simple design, yet a lot of collectors like how the currency and coins were of Canada. And next up, we have this half penny from, you guessed it, the Great Britain Island. This is depicting Elizabeth II on the obverse. And last, but certainly not least, one of my favorite international coins is this Nazi Germany 5 Reichsmark coin. Now this 
really, really symbolic of what we had to fight in World War II. And it's a gorgeous design. As you can see five Reichs fending. And it's just a very interesting design. And anybody you tell I have a Nazi coin, they're going to be very interested. So this is a great coin to have. Moving on from that, let's talk about some tokens. Tokens are some of the things you can get for real cheap. Right here is Department of Treasury Denver Mint token that I found at my local coin shop in their foreign coins and tokens bin. A lot of coin shops you'll find have different deals. Five for a buck, ten for a buck, coins of the world. Just bins and bins of stuff. You can get these for really, really cheap. Now this is a very nice token, quite chunky, quite heavy. No, this was not made in 1789. Quite a modern depiction. This is a telephone token. Now this is great because if you look, there's different ridges and stuff so it can fit into the payphone. A very, very cool piece of history that honestly was phased out not too long ago, but it feels like an ancient time. This is a plastic token, quite light. Quite interesting. This is a Utah sales tax token. I'm not quite sure what these are used for, but it's very interesting how they made tokens out of plastic. It is so light. Very interesting. Very, very, you know, quite mysterious piece of currency, if you will. Now this is a bus token from the Boise Bus Company from Boise, Idaho. It's good for one fare, and it has these really interesting holes and it has this B kind of cut out, this negative space cut out for the B to exist. It's very interesting. I really do like it. This is a World War II OPA red point. This was known as, as a ration token. You would get your rations by giving this to whoever was rationing out food. Very interesting. As you can see, a lot of World War II history throughout a lot of these coins. But of course, you can get World War I. You can get you know World War II or anything. But what you guys came here to see is the 24 karat gold bullion. You can guess what it is? And that's right, for those of you who know what this is, this is sold on AppMex and SD Bullion and any of the major bullion sites. This is one Utah gold back. Now this is one one thousandth of a troy ounce of gold. However, it is real gold. And it is gold sprayed onto a, a polymer note and it is encapsulated between two sheets of plastic. So it's real gold, absolutely. You can see right down here, it says one one thousandth of a troy ounce of 24 karat gold for circulation in Utah. Now, Utah is special in this sense that they started this gold back program as a voluntary currency option. They are trying to make it so that currency is backed by gold like it used to be back then. And this just has some very interesting anti-counterfeiting measures in place. Gorgeous piece of note. This is how you can get real 24 karat gold bullion for 20 bucks. Well folks, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching through to the end. This is actually a video response to a challenge put out by the Silver Picker. If you guys don't know who the Silver Picker is, he's an awesome YouTube content creator who teaches you all about making money on your own terms, coins and currency, and a bunch more. Highly recommend checking him out. Great content for anybody young or old. Link to his channel will be down in the description below. With that out of the way, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving a like. And if you really enjoyed it, maybe a subscribe. That subscribe button down there knows exactly what you're doing. Hovering your finger right over it to click it. There you go. And finally, I do have a store uh, on eBay where you can find a lot of the coins and collectibles you're seeing on the screen right now for sale right on the on the store so if you guys are looking to get some more things to add to your collection consider checking me out on ebay and if you really enjoy what you see maybe buy some stuff from there as well well self promo aside thanks for watching the video and until we see you again in the next video thank you and goodbye